I'm a suspect. Hanging with the killers in the projects. Tater on the barrel, keep quiet. Catch a nigga slipping from behind. OG, Bobby, Josh. OG, Bobby, Josh. OG, Bobby, Josh. OG, Bobby, Josh. What's poppin' Vicks Vapor Rub? <laughs> it's me, Keisha, a.k.a. Color Me Pink. And I'm here with this week's All Tea, All Shade, Real Housewives of Atlanta, Season 14, Episode 17 Review. If you are new to my channel, I drop videos Monday through Sunday. Everything that I say is for entertainment purposes only and not to be taken seriously. Now let's get into the Real Housewives of Atlanta Season Finale Review. The show starts off with us learning that Kenya Moore Hair Care will now be in 5,000 CVS stores. She was able to get her products and everything over here in the United States. She just had to pay more. That is a great look for her hair care company. So shout out to Kenya. Then we see Marlo and the boys visit Sonya at her home. And the boys are going to spend some male quality time with Ross. He's going to teach them how to change a tire and check their oil. And I think that that was super sweet of him to do i think that this is what marlo had been saying to the other ladies like you know just call to you know spend time with them or check on them or whatever the case may be so that was really sweet that ross extended himself and they extended their family to do that for the boys you could tell that they really had a good time and that ross honestly had a good time hell i ain't seen him smile that much this whole damn season so marlo tells sonya that her mom is coming to visit and she's really worried about it because you know her mom is an addict and she doesn't know what state she's going to be in and the last time she was around they got into it and she went to knocking on all marlo's neighbor's door calling her bitches and stuff so it was a real big mess um and then sonya goes on to tell marlo that you know ross finally came at her and said that you know if she's not happy with having a baby if she's not ready he doesn't want to do anything that she's not comfortable with and her seeing his willingness and how sexy he was then made her decide that she does want to have a baby and she's going to get her iud out i'm like girl we went on this journey for nothing that's all you wanted girl okay then we see Sheree visit the venue for the fashion show. The venue is spectacular. I absolutely loved it. But the problem is the person that she hired to create the samples for the show don't have no pieces for her. <laughs> she only got like five pieces ready. And I'm wondering, is Sheree putting on for the show like she ain't got these pieces or is this really how things are really playing out for her? Because she's saying that she's super scared and nervous that she's not going to have any fashions like it was 14 years ago. And so she's just freaking out and so concerned. So I can't wait to see how this is going to play out because I am watching this as I'm filming. So I can't wait to see what this fashion show about to be given. Then see Marlo in her car driving, praying to God that this visit with her mom goes well. She doesn't want, you know, anything bad to pop off. She goes and picks up her mom from a hotel because she didn't want her mom staying with her because, you know, back in the day, they have really, you know, bad altercations or whatever. And, you know, she had her mama, her and stuff looking right. I was like, yes, mama makeup was done and everything. But the mama came out with no teeth. She didn't have her dentures in. And Marlo was like, girl, where your teeth at? <laughs> and she was like, I accidentally threw them away. And she was like, $5,000, gone. She was like, girl, we're going to have to get you for some veneers and something. She was like, but you look cute, though. You look pretty. And I was like, thank you, Marlo, for not having your mama on her looking crazy. Even without her teeth, she still was beautiful. So... Marlo takes her mama to this store so she can buy um, products and stuff for her flea market store that she has, which was really cute. Her mama says that she's not on drugs right about now. You know, she's clean or whatever. And um, Marlo was like, I just need to know that, you know, you going to stay clean. And the mama was like, you know, I'm not going to, you know, use drugs. I want to come home. And she was like, you know, what really hurt me, because you've hurt me too, is you kicking me out of my house. So apparently Marlo had gotten her mom a house in Atlanta and the boys were originally staying with their grandmother, but the mama was on drugs, had different folks in the house. Police was being called. It was fighting and stuff going on. And that's when William called and said, Auntie, can you come get us? Because the mama had been missing for days and it was just a mess. And so Marlo kicked her out. 
And Marlo was like, but you don't think I needed you at 10 when I left? And she was like, well, it don't matter. Wherever you was at, I always came where you were. Like, I always found you no matter, like, what foster care you was in, I always found you. And she gets up crying, and Marlo's crying. And she hugs Marlo and was like, you know, just stop pushing me away pretty much. Like, let me be there. And Marlo was like, I just don't want to get hurt again. And it was just really sad. It was really sad. And I just pray that they can get to a place where they can love and honestly trust each other. Because I can tell that that is part of Marlo's issues is that she didn't have a mom. She didn't have a dad. She had to raise herself. She's went through so many hardships and she's not a trusting person because hell, I can't even trust my own mama. So how can I trust just a regular person out here on the street? You know what I'm saying? And you can see where a lot of her hurt and pain comes from, but she cannot continue to use it as an excuse to treat people shitty. So we then see uh, Drew, Candy, and Sonya come to support Kenya at CVS. They're, everybody's extremely proud of her that her products are in CVS stores. And uh, they talk about the fashion show and everybody like they ready. They hope everything works out. And uh, Drew was like, well, I just hope that it works out. I know she only got five pieces in, but I don't want this to be no type of party because we all know she don't pay for parties. And they was like, girl, she still ain't paid you the money for the little birthday party. She was like, girl, no, she has not paid me nothing. <laughs> so Sheree ain't gave her half of that little measly $1,300 that they had to split for Kenya and Marlo's little joint birthday party. Girl, I am tickled pink at that foolishness. Now, when they've been going back and forth on social media, Sheree said she did pay her. So we're going to see at the reunion. Candy meets up with Mama Joyce at the restaurant and they sit down and Candy tells her mama about, you know, her and Ty sitting down to figure out their trust for the children and where the money and all that stuff was going to go. And Mama Joyce feels like Riley, since she's the oldest and because she doesn't have a father, that she should get the most. And I can see what she was saying, but no, all my kids going to get equal. I mean, I understand that, but I'm not going to give more to one child than the other. That's just, I wouldn't do that because I wouldn't want my kids to feel like I favor one more than them. And then it's kind of like Mama Joyce kind of like separating Riley from her kids with Ty. Like one is better than the other one. It's kind of a little bit weird. Um... And she also suggests to Candy that she have a separate trust outside of the one that she has with Todd. And Candy's like, you know, I think that I should give my son, I mean, my husband something. And my mom Joyce was like, you sure? She was like, because what if he marries somebody else? You don't want no other woman basically benefiting off of all of your stuff. And Candy kind of like thinking like, oh, shit, she kind of right, like. And she even says in her confessional, like, she wouldn't want for Todd to remarry anybody else. Like, he can date or whatever, but not remarry. And I was like, well, girl, <laughs> you better not leave his ass nothing. Because Ty looked like he would get remarried, girl. And that's just not fair, you know. Because if he died and you met somebody else and wanted to get remarried, I'm pretty sure you would. So she tells her mama that Don Juan is going to be the trustee over the joint trust and mama Joyce was like, I feel like I should be on there too. And cat, I mean, Kathy candy just started cracking up laughing. She was like, girl, really like you and Ty can't even get along. Like, absolutely not. Like mama Joyce shouldn't have nothing to do with nothing. Cause this just going to be a fight to the death child. And ain't nobody got time. So at this point it is one day until the, she by Sheree fashion show. She still only got five pieces. She's still waiting on the other 19. Don't know if they're going to be able to get in. And, all I concentrated on, though, was the metallic pants she got on because I got the same metallic jeans. I've had them for about a year now, and I couldn't figure out how to rock them. But now I kind of know how I want to style them, and I can't wait to wear my metallic jeans. And Apollo comes to do the rehearsal. Her daughter, the her youngest daughter, was like, I seen Apollo. <laughs> it was like, okay, bitch, you act like Apollo Drake. Um, and then in walks Tyrone. And why did Tyrone walk in with a pimp walk? What what the fuck was that about? Nigga, it looked like he was limping. This nigga, didn't he have like on a Kooji sweater? Like, I'm not understanding nothing that's going on. Sheree is super shocked to see this nigga. This nigga literally walking in like he cool Modi or some shit. I'm just like, what are my eyes seeing? This is too much. 
too much for me. So Kaylee, Sheree's daughter, is like, who is that? Like, she don't even know who Tyrone is. She ain't never even seen this man. How your mama been dating this nigga for all these years and you ain't never even seen this nigga, don't know how he look? And so when they tell her that this is Tyrone, she was like, oh my God, he's short. <laughs> so Sheree is stuck on stupid, like, what the fuck is this nigga doing here? Um... And as he walked up and approached her and he had his mouth open, y'all, this nigga must have had a gold tooth on the front, on his front teeth back in the day because one of, that, one of his front teeth was gray. That nigga had a dead tooth. <laughs> Looking like, Sheree, you was dating a nigga with a dead tooth for all these years. You know she was with Tyrone for the money. You know Tyrone was a hood nigga that still had money, saved up, stashed away while he was in jail that's the only reason why that bitch was still with this dead tooth ass nigga so they go step off to the side to talk and you know she hit him right with it like you don't think you owe me an apology you played me you can show up to my shit but when i showed up for you you stood me up he was like i didn't know you was filming you was trying to get me locked up she was like but i didn't came to visit you we didn't went out to dinner all types of stuff he was like yeah but not on camera basically saying that you know he was sneaking and taking her places when he wasn't allowed to and she was like, you owe me an apology. He was like, I don't owe you an apology. She was like, okay, so what are you here for? So she gets mad and walks away. Tyrone just walking around in circles, looking stupid in the face, don't know what to do. Kaylee standing right there. She was like, hello, how you doing? He was like, oh, oh, oh. hey, 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 nice to meet you. She was like, I'm Kaylee. He was like, yeah, nice, nice to meet you. <laughs> and so then Apollo come over and was basically like, you know, you left her. Like, you know, you got to respect her. You can't be leaving her by herself. Like basically telling dude what he did was foul. But Tyrone ain't agreeing with that. And then Apollo in his confessional, the producer was like, you know, a, a Tyrone said that he would have got locked up if he would have, you know, met up with her. And Apollo said that he was lying. Like he was lying. That ain't had nothing to do with nothing. So Sheree then come back over to him. And he was like, you really did a nice job, though. I'm proud of you. She was like, thank you. She was like, you really don't think you owe me an apology? He was like, no, maybe we can apologize to each other. She get irate again and tell him to leave, calling him bro man from the fifth floor and all this type of shit. Basically, in so many words, trying to call this man Dusty. But I'm like, girl, he wasn't Dusty when you was fucking with him all these years. Don't try to do him now. Don't do him now because the nigga you fucking with now is a dusty nigga, a dirty bird girl. So he ended up walking back out, you know, like he Kumo D in the wild, wild west. <laughs> All he needed was the trench coat. So we then see Marlo mama visit Lay Archive. She's really proud of Marlo. They sit down and have another conversation. And she says that, you know, she invited Candy. So they do a flashback of her calling Candy and inviting Candy to meet her mom and her apologizing for how everything went down um, at the vacation. So Marlo is talking to her mama and, you know, she makes a comment about how her mama just literally only call her when she want money and how everybody in her family just looks at her like a fucking piggy bank and child don't I know how that shit feel. Um, and so her mama was like, you know, I call you for more than that or whatever. They going back and forth. And the mama was like, you know what? I, I asked Crystal, should I tell Marlo about my boyfriend? Because I want to bring him around. And, and Marlo flips. She was like, why is everything about a man with you? So she lets us know that growing up, her mama always basically put men over her. And she was like, probably that's probably why I ain't got no man now. Because, you know, this is such a trigger for me when it comes to her mama. And she says to her mama, like, you dating this man? He on drugs and shit what is he doing for you and her mama like he ain't on drugs no more I've been with him for four years and she like Marlo was just frustrated because she was like I knew it was something you could just tell that she was in her mind thinking I knew it was something I knew this wasn't just about me and her you know what I'm saying and she gets really upset and she was basically like, you know, you just came back around me. Literally just came back around me three days ago. And you already talked to me about some man. Like, get the fuck out of here with that. So Candy arrives right as they're arguing. And Marlo is flustered. She's embarrassed. She excuses herself because she's upset. And she starts to cry. And Candy like, you know, what's going on or whatever. Marlo comes back out and apologizes. And her mama was like, you know what, Marlo? I'm sorry if I hurt you and if I made you cry, I won't bring him around. I won't bring him around. I won't say nothing else about it. And they continue on with the day, but you can tell that her mama bringing up this guy 
really fucked up the whole thing for her. It really honestly did. And it's sad. It, it really honestly is sad. And I really do feel bad for Marlo. I really honestly did. It's the day of the fashion show. And Sheree finally got all the looks in. She has 24 looks. Plus some extras if needed. The venue looks fantastic. All the ladies arrive. Candy just looked like Candy. She ain't really give too much. Drew's makeup was horrendous. It was giving me Michael Jackson. I don't know what was going on. It was too light for her skin complexion. And that blonde hair wasn't making it no better. Kenya came slain as per usual. Her dress was phenomenal. And Sonya's dress, oh my God, I need that dress immediately. It was everything. Oh my God, I lived for Sonya and Kenya's dresses. Then we see Bob Whitfield is there. He came to support his ex-wife. The kids are there. Her kids are all grown and beautiful. And then Marlo arrives and she lets the girls know that Tyrone is in fact there and that he has on a black and white checkerboard suit and that he got flowers and stuff for Sheree and word on the curb is that he been in town for a few days. So I'm wondering, did he slide through the, to the crib? You know what I'm saying? And I think that he did based off what we saw when he brought the flowers into Sheree's dressing room. She wasn't that shocked to see him like she was the first time, which lets me know she probably spent the block and let him beat her box okay <laughs> i must say that tyrone looked really nice in his suit or whatever he brought bouquets of flowers for her but she was like it looked like he got them from Publix. <laughs> and in shady production talking about some he got them from Publix for 19.99 they are so wild for that shit then we see mr dwight yes dwight is back remember me and sheridan was just saying on our tea party uh where we recap you know season one of real housewives of atlanta how we miss dwight and we want to see dwight this is what this show is missing bring back the old school people bring back dwight bring back apollo bring back peter shit bring apollo and his wife on the show bring back um uh uh D D deshaun snow bring back the old people that's what we need on this show like this was so good to reminisce and go back down memory lane it was so good to see Dwight he looks fantastic his whatever work he's gotten done on his face since being on the show he looks fantastic it looked so good on him his outfit and everything was on point he congratulated Sheree said how proud of her he was and she was like there was no way I was gonna have this show without Dwight because you know back in the day he was like a fashion show with no fashions how dreadful <laughs> so then Sheree introduces Tyrone to her mama she was like mama this is Tyrone and she was like mm, who and she was like prison bay oh <laughs> So then Tyrone give her mama some flowers and say how good it is to meet her. And the whole thing is just really awkward. Like she ain't fucking with him no more or whatever. The money that ran out, she ain't fucking with the nigga no more. So then we see um, Tyrone is introduced to all the ladies. And Kenya and confessional was like, I don't like him. Mm -mm, he seems sketchy. Mm -mm, nope, 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 nope. Peter is there high as a kite. Kenya was like, hey, Peter. She was like, oh, my God, your fly's open. Your fly's open. Your fly's open. This nigga didn't hear. She, she said, because he too busy buzzing around the damn party. Quad is there. Lisa Nicole Cloud is there. Like, the who's who of Atlanta is in the building. This is a big thing. But the gag is the show is two hours late. And Dwight is just shaking his head. And he was like, I'm ready to go. Like, this is some bullshit. Why is this show starting two hours late? This is just ridiculous. And I would have been mad too. Like, the girl's feet is hurting. Everybody just sitting there waiting. Like, two hours is a long time. A long ass time. The show finally starts after two hours. Everybody is super excited. Some of the pieces were a little generic and cheaply made. Um, some of them were were really good quality, innovative. Um, I like the jogging suits and stuff like that. Some of them, you know, were a little bit overtly sexual, like who's wearing that to exercise in, but it was cute nonetheless. Child, them ladies went crazy over that one white boy that was walking. I mean, he was fine and swagged out. Ken was looking at him like she wanted to sop him up with a biscuit, and I ain't mad at her. 
Overall, the show was really good. I give it about a good seven and a half, you know, but not a seven, a seven, because a lot of the pieces were unwearable for real, for real. But I kind of teared up a little bit. I, it was like, damn, she finally did it. She finally did it. And I was super, super proud of Sheree because we have been waiting on this for 14 years. I believe the web's up, website is up right now to go purchase i'm gonna look as soon as i get done actually let me go look right now let me go on her goddamn page while i'm talking because if she ain't got this website up sheree whitfield let's see is there she by sheree let's see all right it's up y'all the website is up officially so you can go and shop i'm hitting shop right now okay what's happening i hit shop maybe it's a lot of people on here like me being nosy trying to see what's happening because i'm hitting shop and the page isn't loading so i'm gonna go back later and see what is what we working with and see what sizes you know, she go up too. But overall, I'm really proud of Sheree. After the show, Tyrone asked to talk to her and she said, nope. Because, you know, by that time, she was moving on to Love and Marriage Huntsville, dick. But the season finale, I will give it a, mm, a B plus. It was cute. It was cute. Ready for the reunion. I will be dressing up for the reunion next week. Super excited. Let me know what you guys thought about the season finale. What did you think about the fashions? Let's talk down below in the comments section, you guys. Make sure to thumbs up this video, like, and subscribe, and hit that notification bell button. I love you all, and I will see you on the next video. Bye!